The following video addresses the maintenance and repair of the LF860 Master Series Backflow Prevention Assembly from Febco. Before beginning any work, please familiarize yourself with these procedures to avoid injuring yourself or damaging the valve. Product resources including installation and specification sheets, repair kit ordering information, and additional videos can be found at febcoonline.com. The LF860 features inlet and outlet shutoff valves, two check assemblies inside the valve body, four test cocks, and a relief valve. No special tools are needed for inspection or repair. You'll need an adjustable wrench and a socket set. Febco backflow prevention assemblies can be serviced in line. We'll begin by shutting down the system. Note this is a dry demonstration. In real-world applications, some water will escape the valve during the following procedure. Take proper precautions. Slowly close the outlet shutoff valve. Slowly close the inlet shutoff valve. Bleed residual pressure by opening the number 4, number 3, and number 2 test cocks, cupping your hand above the valves to minimize water spray. Remove the cover bolts, removing the two bolts that are located next to the retainer pin last. Note that there is some preload on the cover from the spring pack, so use care and caution when removing the cover. Inspect the bearing socket on the check cover. Excessive wear, cracking, or other apparent damage indicates replacement of the bearing socket is required. Remove the cover O-ring. Inspect the cover O-ring for damage and replace if needed. Note, during regular maintenance, the entirety of the check module does not need to be removed from the valve body for service. Instead, we will uninstall and inspect individual check components. Remove the pivot bearing from the upper spring retainer of the spring module. Inspect for wear and tear and replace if necessary. Remove the spring module for inspection. The spring is held in place by a load pin and two retaining clips. Remove one of the two retaining clips and using the second clip as a handle, slide out the retaining pin. Lift the spring out of the valve. Inspect for wear or damage and replace if necessary. Inspect the check disc. The check disc assembly is held in place by a jam nut connecting it to the check disc arm. Unscrew the jam nut and washer. Lift the check disc arm and carefully remove the check disc assembly. Inspect the seat sealing surface for debris or damage. Note, with the check disc assembly removed, the check seat sealing surface is now exposed. Care should be taken not to drop the check disc arm onto the seat sealing surface. We recommend wrapping the check disc arm in a rag to minimize potential contact of these two components. Inspect the check disc rubber. If the rubber is cut, damaged, or worn, it should be removed and replaced. Unscrew the four bolts holding the retainer plate in place. Clean the disc components to remove any debris and install a new rubber disc. During emergency repairs, the rubber disc may be temporarily reversed and reinstalled. All damaged discs should be replaced as soon as possible. Check with the local authority having jurisdiction to ensure the reinstallation of a reverse disc is allowed. If the check sealing surface is damaged, the seat will need repair or replacement. The seat should only be removed if the arm or seat ring appears to be worn or damaged. To remove, disconnect the four lock nuts on the exterior of the valve, holding the seat ring in place. Carefully lift it from the valve. With all the check components cleaned or replaced as needed, it's time to rebuild. If you remove the seat ring assembly, make sure to properly reinstall and lubricate all O-rings, including the stud and main sealing surface. 
and evenly tighten the four locking nuts. Do not over tighten the lock nuts. Reconnect the check disc assembly to the arm by re-threading and tightening the jam nut and washer. Note, when the jam nut is tight, the check disc is designed to wobble. Reconnect the spring assembly by replacing the load pin and retaining clips. Reinstall the pivot bearing. Replace the cover o-ring, lubricating as needed. Reinstall the cover, aligning the pivot bearing to the bearing socket and the retainer pin to the retaining pin hole. Rethread the bolts in a cross pattern, starting with the two bolts on either side of the retainer pin. Torque wrench tight in a cross pattern to ensure that the cover is evenly threaded. Repeat the previous procedure for the second check, replacing damaged components as needed and ensuring the valve body is free of dirt and debris. Once both checks have been inspected and reassembled, it's time to restart the system. Start by closing the number two, number three, and number four test cocks. Slowly open the inlet shutoff valve halfway to allow the valve to fill with water. Bleed any air trapped within the system from test cocks number two, number three, and number four in this order by cupping your hand over the test cock, opening halfway until water flows from the open port, and then closing. Once all air is purged from the system, fully open the inlet shutoff valve. Before opening the outlet shutoff valve, check with local governing code requirements prior to reactivating the backflow assembly for system use. For more information on the Master Series Backflow Prevention Assembly, head over to febcoonline.com.